Okay, again, I apologise, it's been uh, quite a while since I did my last video, but I've been sent another couple of knives to sharpen. Uh, this is a Muela gut hook Spanish knife, and you can see she's, uh, she's a bit rough around the edges there. But these generally take a pretty good edge, they're, they're a nice little knife. And now, as a, something like olive wood handle, slight coil there for uh, choking up. So, not a bad size. And the other one is a knife I've been interested in seeing quite a while. It's a Davy Moore. He's an Irish maker. Let's see if I can get that. Davy Moore. And I believe this is 01 steel. It is Hunter's Knife. This was a, a competition on boards.ie. It was a prize. One of the lads won it. And he just needs her touched up. So you can see she's a kind of a scanty grind with a micro bevel. I'm not sure what the handle material is. It's like oak. It's very dark. Got white liners and dark green liners, and I'm sure the colour is going to show up on these. Nicely put together knife, stainless bolts, little brass liner in the lanyard tube, power cord lanyard, you know, it's in it braid, and she comes in a, a fairly deep pouch type sheet, which has an integral loop. Okay. Knife fits in there, and the lanyard obviously is to help remove it from the pouch. And this is quite a handy size for a hunting knife for in the field for carrying. Very handy to bring on the belt or in a pack. She's a three and a half odd four inch blade. It's got a very small coil for choking up. I'm not sure. I have kind of a fat hand anyway, big fingers. But a nice point, nice little swedge. It's not sharpened. It comes to a fine point and nice knife I've been, I've been wondering about these for a while I've seen David Moore posting on boards and on British blades and I was quite interested to see one of his pieces so I'm going to put it at, <coughs> sorry excuse me I'm going to put a 20 degree per side micro bevel on this one and this one I may convex on the belt sander and give it a strop on the leather strop belt and we'll see how that goes Usual test before we begin. Piece of copper paper, and she's she's not going to catch it there. And the muela, not really going to catch either. Okay, so I'll have a go at these and see how we get on. Cheers. Okay, things are going well with the Davy Moore. I actually had to go to the extra coarse diamond stones to set the edge and repair a little bit of tip damage and I'm very nearly apexing the entire edge. It's starting to get sharp back here just on the sweep of the belly there I'm not sure I can catch it but there's a slight flat right out on the very edge. What I'm going to do is keep going nice and tidy on the stone until I sort of creep up on that very outside edge. It's like an air roof now with just the very ridge of the roof is at the wrong angle. So I'm going to keep going until both those sides meet nice and even. I looked up the spec of this knife on boards.ie and it's actually CPM 154 steel with a bog oak handle. So very very hard, very impervious to any kind of um, blood or fluids. The CPM 154, like I have a, an Emerson Commander in 154 CM which is 154 conventional melt. And it might be just the, the steel or it might be the heat treat that it got. But the Emerson is much softer than this uh, Davy Moore. This knife is hard, that's why I had to break out the diamonds. Um, I imagine the lad that owns it, Mauser 308, had a bit of a job trying to get any kind of an edge on this. I mean, that stone's probably, it just skate across them. It's very, very hard. So we're getting there now, and I'll go up through the full range of diamonds, and then I'm going to strop. What I would recommend to Mauser 308 when he gets his knife back is a little stropping often. And it doesn't have to be anything fancy. This is an old leather belt, glued kind of hairy side up onto a bit of Durabella lat. You have Autosol metal polish compound you can get in any um, motor factors. Or go on to British Blades, buy yourself a strop from Longstrider and some Smurf Poo. There's, there's Longstrider. Okay. Get in touch with him online. Uh, I'm using either a cork or a hard felt block for my deburring just to take that little curl of steel off the very edge of the knife I haven't got to the muela yet so I'm going to progress up from the extra coarse coarse there's a medium diamond stone 
I find next to fine DMT stones in the kit and then I'm going to finish with um, a 3M stropping compound it's a, a filament belt that was designed for finishing fibre optic connections so it's self adhesive, pressure sensitive adhesive on a glass blank, very very flat so I'm going to polish with that and maybe a little finish off on the long strider strop because I like to hand strop at the very end so I'm, I'm sharpening away on the edge pro so it's all by hand hand powered so there's no overheating in the edge we're not going to burn the steel we're not going to ruin the temper we're just going to creep up on that edge and once we have the edges meeting cleanly and she's cutting well edge deburred we're going to refine that edge until we have a nice polished edge back on the knife okay i'm going to get on okay. i pretty much have finished with the diamond stones now and i'm going to give this a strop up so you can see it's nearly there but it's still kind of a haze on the edge. Anyway, this is how I like to strop now. This is a Lidl's finest tabletop bench vise, and it adjusts here. There's a, a ball swivel here, so you can turn it on side, turn it at different angles. There's a suction base, and there's the main clamping part. So I like to clamp my strop in there, and it leaves both hands free to apply pressure onto my blade. And there's no chance of me accidentally cutting myself because my hands aren't going to be holding the strop. And I can just strop forward and back. I like to go away and back to try and keep the angle as even as possible. And I'm going to give this a couple of goes. I've freshly ap applied um, Smurf Poo on here. You can see the kind of blue tint. I like to scrape these down. I have a tool that's usually used for cleaning barbecues. So it's like a scraper on one side and a wire brush on the other side. So I can scrape off the old compound when it gets um, shiny and black. Scrape that off, give the leather a shot of the wire brush to bring up the nap so you have a little kind of a wick to hold the new compound and then apply your compound and strop. And this should go black just from the, the minute amount of steel it's going to take off the edge. And I've, um, I don't know, can you see the, the tip there? There was a little damage, there's a little turn on it. So I've uh, done that on the stones as well just to make a new point, make it nice and pointy. And we're going to stop it now and test it again. Okay, I just wanted to include a few points on safety. Obviously, the 1x42 belt sander is a power tool. It's got no guards on it. So if your finger goes in, either in here or in here, it'll get whipped into the belt and probably taken off. Okay, always wear your eye protection, hearing protection. Keep children and animals out of the room while you're using it. Keep an eye on what you're doing. Uh, I like to wear a headlamp so that I can see exactly what's going on at the face of the belt where the belt intersects the steel. So I can judge my angle, my progress across the belt. When you're moving across the belt, don't take the tip of the blade all the way across because the, especially these lighter belts, these mylar belts, will curl around the tip and burn it off. Okay, the X-weighted belts, you'll get away to, with it to a certain degree, but it's it's better if you come across and stop, come off. Coming from this side, come across, stop. Stop at this edge, depending on the direction of travel. Come across, this edge, stop. Okay, so it doesn't curl around. Obviously these are mylar belts, so they're not gonna stretch. If you leave your leather stropping belt on here, the tension on the spring is gonna stretch your belt and it'll be useless. On this design of a grinder, what you could do is drop a little block down inside this uh, box iron to raise up the arm will give you a little extra tension but you don't want to be stretching your leather belt you'll get years out of it if you don't damage it okay when I'm stropping or when I'm running the belt sander belt sander direction of movement is this way and I hold the knife spine up edge down so as I come into the belt the belt is traveling off of the edge I don't want to come in this way I'll either cut the belt or it'll grab and pull the knife out of my hand. I, I know some people do grind edge into the belt. I'm afraid of my life to do it. I, it this thing scares me. Not as much as a buffer would. Buffers are lethal. But uh, just for that reason, I like to come off the edge. You raise a bar coming off the edge more. You can debar. You can use the leather belt to debar. You can use a cork. You can use the rock hard felt. You can use some ingrain pine. Just slice lightly through it. You'll pull that bar off. But for me. I think it's just safer and makes more sense to have the belt travel coming off of the edge. Uh, 
the other thing I wanted to say obviously if you're um, doing this indoors wear a respirator you don't know what kind of dust or steel or handle materials are you know that some woods are very irritant to, to the respiratory system I use a damp piece of towel to try and catch uh, a lot of the steel flakes that are coming off uh, I see a lot of grinder setups have like a bucket of water underneath to catch that uh, generally I like to do this outdoors in daylight if possible so I can see exactly what's going on uh, I just had the opportunity now to do a bit of sharpening so I said I'd get it done get it out of the way a uh, very handy tool but you have to be careful with power tools okay and now okay, I'll just show I've pretty much got the Davy Moore finished and I'm going to show you the end result now after this little video uh, this is my Veal 1x42 belt sander she's got a P320 X weighted belt so it's not as flexible it won't curl around the edge so much this is on a spring so you can see that tensions the belt I got this motor it's a one third horsepower motor and I got the lead that put it on there to um, turn down the speed it's about 900 rpm so again it's slow it's quiet it's not running very fast it's not going to overheat or cook my edges once I do my part and you know don't leave too much contact time between belt and steel we have a platen here for flat grinding but I like to use this slash section between the wheel and the top of the platen so depending on how hard you press the belt will deflect more around the edge to give you a greater or lesser convex on the edge and I like to use this for um, maybe softer steels that mightn't take a flat edge fine enough without rolling over during okay. use it's going to be an apple seed type profile rather than a V to help support the carbides in the steel stop them pulling out prevent chipping and rolling and it really helps kind of softer uh, kitchen knives that type of thing where the CPM 154 and the Davy Moore knife is very very hard and well able to hold a finer V edge so we're going to give this Muela every chance to be just as good like I said it's an axe type edge but obviously not as thick this this steel stock isn't as thick as an axe so it's a very thin just on the edge it's not a full height convex from there down to the spine from the spine to the edge it's just a very edge convex so it's going to give it a fine edge but a strong enough edge to be able for the kind of work that we do um garlock and deer cutting around the hocks taking off the legs taking off the head even splitting the um the pubic bone and the breastbone down the ribcage should be well able for that okay and i'm going to finish with this that's a 320 belt i'm going to show you these other belts these are again micron belts of the type used the 3m micron grit belts and they're the type used for uh finished fiber optic cables and to finish up where have i it uh, and there's a leather belt from sergi sharp and that's got blue compound on it and I'm going to strop for a finish on that and finish with a hand stropping and then I'll show you how these knives cut okay let's see if we can see the finish on these edges bear in mind they were taken to a, a very high stone finish and then stropped in this case hand stropped and the moela was power stropped on a leather belt surgy sharp leather belt on the uh, veal belt sander okay again using power tools you don't want to cook the edge you want to control the heat what I usually have would be um, a glass or a pot of water to dip the knife if I felt it starting to get too hot you should always be able to hold it especially the very very tip will gather heat very very quickly so if needs be dip it ok you can see the shine and the muela which um, looks like it had a visit to a, a wheel grinder at some point but you can see the shine on the edge Okay, that's pretty much cosmetic. You don't have to take it to that high level of a polish. I like to I like to do that. And we'll see how they cut on printer paper, which is like it's not the ideal test medium, but it gives me a good reference standard for all of my knives. Once I know how one cuts on printer paper, I can pretty much see like it's not snagging or tearing any little bits. It's cutting through it nice and clean all along the edge okay and we'll see the Davy Moore this is the CPM 154 taken to a high polish and that's well 
That's effortless. Brilliant. That's a crazy thing. Okay. <laughs> I'm trying to do this. If I do it while I'm looking in the camera screen, viewfinder, I can do that. If I do it while I'm looking at the paper, I can't really tell where I am in the viewfinder. But uh, I'm going to take it that uh, that's okay. Um, let's just see. Let's see, you can see the arms. I'm going to have to look at my arm to do this now because I don't want to brief myself. Okay. Ooh. And I'm not sure if you can see all the hairs popping up into the air. That's what they call hair popping sharp rather than shaving sharp. And it'll take every hair in its pat with one pass. But it's um it's very, very sharp. Anyway, I hope its owner is going to be pleased with that. I know I would be. It's and like a steel this hard, it's gonna hold that edge for a long, long time with very little maintenance. A little strop every so often, just to touch it up. And that'll be fine. If all comes to all, send it back to me and we'll do it again. Okay, thanks for watching everybody and it's good to be back making videos. Good luck.